All right, long stalled efforts to end the war in Gaza appear to have gained momentum, with Israel saying its spy chief will attend ceasefire talks. And Hamas also vowing to stop fighting if a truce is reached. A senior Hamas official reportedly said that a delegation from the group's Doha based leadership discussed truce related ideas and proposals with Egyptian officials on Thursday. The official said Hamas expressed readiness to stop the fighting, laying down conditions that Israel must commit to a ceasefire, withdrawing from the Gaza Strip, allowing the return of the displaced people. It should also agree to a prisoner exchange deal and allow the entry of humanitarian aid into Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Ben Benethan Yahu has welcomed Egypt's readiness to reach a deal for the release of the hostages held by the militants in Gaza. After the Cairo meeting, Netanyahu directed the head of Israel's Mossad spy agency to leave for Doha on Sunday to discuss the truce deal and take forward a series of initiatives. Well, early on Thursday, the US and Qatar said that Gaza ceasefire talks will resume in Doha. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with the Qatari leaders in Doha on his 11th trip to the region since the war began. Blinken in London is expected to also meet with the foreign ministers of Jordan and the UAE today, two key partners in a post-war plan for Gaza. US top diplomat will also meet with Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Mikati to discuss the conflict in the country. Meanwhile, Israel's far-right ministers Itamar bin Giver and Bezalel Smotrich have slammed Netanyahu's decision to send a high-level delegation team to Doha. In a post on X, Ben Gavir said that the announcement was not approved by the cabinet and asserted that Israel should rather starve Hamas of oxygen than agree for a deal that will allow it to reorganize and attack Israel. Israel's finance minister, Smotrich in X, said he deeply regrets Netanyahu's decision as Qatar is an enemy country that supports Hamas and backs its positions in the negotiations. Furthermore, according to a New York Times report, Iran is readying for a war with Israel, while at the same time seeking to avoid one. This comes as Tehran is awaiting Israel's response to its latest missile attack. The report citing four Iranian officials says that Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has ordered Iran's armed forces to formulate plans in response to the expected Israeli retaliation. Iran will strike back if there is significant damage or casualties. Meanwhile, according to TASS news agency, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps chief Hossein Salami has warned that advanced U.S. missile defense system Thad stationed in Israel won't be able to ward off future attacks from Tehran. He said just as the Arrow anti-missile systems did not work during Iranian attack, the Thad systems will also not be able to stop it. All right, for more on this, we're now being joined by Professor James A. Russell, live from Monterey, California. He is an associate professor in the Department of National Security Affairs at NPS, where he's teaching courses on U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you on the show with us. Thank you. Uh, now, sir, Mossad Chief David Bania is traveling to Doha for Gaza ceasefire negotiations. Of course, we know U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in London as well. And this meet comes after Israel's killing of Hamas chief Yahya Sinwar. That being said, how optimistic are you of a breakthrough this, this time around? We know that a ceasefire has remained elusive so far. I'm not optimistic at all, uh, regretfully. Um, uh, and I think it's going to require a sea change in Israeli uh, calculations uh, for these negotiations to move forward. Uh, Israel has shown that it believes it can solve its political problems with the Palestinians through the use of force, and it has engaged in this war of uh, ethnic cleansing, uh, starvation, and disease against the Palestinians in Gaza. Uh, and it is instituting this campaign to try to get the Palestinians to go elsewhere uh, so that the Israelis can send in settlers. 
Um, I don't see Israel uh, in, in, in the current political context in, as in changing this approach. Mm -hmm. um, although uh, I, I, we all hope to be surprised that there can be some kind of breakthrough to stop the senseless slaughter. Professor Russell, the talks are also happening just a few weeks before the U.S. polls uh, with the statement coming out of Netanyahu's office where he said that he welcomed Egypt's willingness to reach a deal at this point of time. Just a few weeks ago, Trump said that he spoke to Bibi. Um, do you think that despite all this, uh, the, the momentum and the movement towards the ceasefire deal, Netanyahu will perhaps not take any critical decision until the outcome of the U.S. US presidential polls because we're also seeing that he's also facing pressure from the far right elements in his party. Uh, it's it's a good question, of course. I, I think it's clear that Netanyahu would uh, uh, rather be dealing with Trump than with uh, Kamala Harris. Um, while the Biden administration has uh, extended this blank check, providing all the arms and money and political support that the Israelis need. Uh, there have been these statements, and of course, the, there have been recently a couple, a letter signed by the secretaries of defense and uh, state, threatening to cut off military aid if the Israelis don't allow more humanitarian aid into North Gaza. Um, I don't think I don't think he would expect to put up with anything like this uh, from a Trump administration. So I would I would expect that some of this uh, some of these uh, sort of considerations are certainly going to play a role in Netanyahu's approach to the whole uh, you know the relationship with the United States and uh, he would get an even freer hand uh, with Trump uh, than he would with the Harris mm. uh, Biden uh, sort of team I think that's that's clear. Uh, Professor, just coming back to a point that you had made earlier as well, you said that you are not optimistic at all and that what Israel wants is for Palestinians to move elsewhere so that Israeli settlers can come in. Now, of course, we know that last time talks had failed. That was because Netanyahu's insistence on Israeli troop deployment, of course, in the Philadelphia corridor. How mm -hmm. do you think things are different this time around? Do you think they would probably want to leverage Sinwar's death this, this time around in the negotiations? Because we have heard from Hamas that they are ready yeah. to stop fighting, but that's only contingent on Israel completely withdrawing from Gaza. I, I think the in the United States, again, uh, it's been this awful circumstance where uh, uh, people have been openly applauding the deaths of someone um, like Sinwar, for example, and they're seeing this as some sort of uh, opening that that you know the, the Kamala Harris was has been talking about this that uh, Sinwar's death represents an opportunity, and I, I, I again I, I'm mystified by all of this talk. Uh, uh, we, the United States, and the Israelis in particular, have been engaging in leadership decapitation slash assassination uh, for the last 25 odd years, and it's never worked. <laughs> in other words, killing the leadership of your opponent doesn't necessarily solve your problem. It's not like occupying the enemy's capital and the enemy raising the white flag and giving up. I, I, I don't, I, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, what what they're smoking in these in these places where where they think that assassination I mean this is this is the Israeli approach in Lebanon they assume that oh killing Nasrallah was going to mean that Hezbollah is, is going to go away and this is complete nonsense of course and it's the same with with Hamas and Hamas has uh, been pretty consistent I would have said in these negotiations which is that have said you must leave. You must leave us alone. You must allow humanitarian uh, assistance come in uh, to come in, and we are going to get back to governing ourselves. And uh, of course, from the Israeli perspective, at least if you listen to the rhetoric, as you just reported, your reporter just said this: the Israelis are, are all, they want to starve and kill all the Palestinians. I mean, these are not reconcilable objectives. Hmm. So that's the source of my, my uh, again, my, uh, as I wish I could say that I was hopeful uh, because it's obvious that this senseless sort of uh, slaughter of innocent civilians needs to end. Right, Professor Russell, the Philadelphia Corridor does remain a point of contention. We'll wait and have to see how uh, the uh, ceasefire talks move forward in Doha. But thank you for joining us on World DNA with your insights. Thank you for having me.